and the first thing I understand, it uses these names. Like when he uses the name the whore, the great whore, it's being descriptive for a very good reason. We, everyone knows what a whore is, right? A hooker, a harlot, is, some, is, a, is a woman that, that sells her body for money. And when you start thinking about the attributes of a whore, these are the same attributes that this city has that is being referred to as the great whore. Um, a whore deceives. It could be deceitful, right? A whore allures through the lust of the flesh and is, is trying to, to get people, tries to defile as many men as possible, trying to get as many people to lie with her for her own gain, for her own profit, and does so in a, in a very lewd way, a very, you know, disgusting way, a very base way, right? I mean, that's what, that's what a whore is. So th this is like, this is describing the attributes of a city that's filthy, that's defiled, that's promiscuous. Those are all things that a, that a whore is. Look at verse number one here in Revelation 17. The Bible says that the whore sits upon many waters. It says, and there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials and talked with me saying, Unto me, come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. We already saw that she was riding on a beast. But here it says that she sits upon many waters. Verse 15 explains what that waters is representative of. Verse 15 says, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So, this whore, this great city, which, verse 18, just jump down to verse 18 real quick. The Bible says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. You're saying, why is a great whore city? That's what it says right here in verse 18. The woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So, this, this, this woman, this whore, is representative of a great city that's reigning over the kings of the earth at this time that... Um, is also sitting on waters, but the waters are representative of peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So tongues, I mean, different languages, different nations. So this is the, the horse sitting on and, and having influence over pretty much the whole world is what we're seeing here. Multitudes, nations, tongues, and in a position of power and ruling and reigning. Basically, this is a big empire, right? Being, being ruled from this great city and this influence that's going out of the world. Now, another attribute of a whore is that a whore moves around and has no loyalty, right? There's no, there's no loyalty at all just to herself. And the kings, in, verse, in chapter 17, the other kings of the earth end up getting fed up with the whore. They end up getting fed up with that great city, and they finally just move to destroy her. Look at verse number 16. The Bible says, "...in the ten horns..." This is the ten horns on the beast which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So the Bible's talking about this great whore, which is a city that has influence and power over the whole world, that is defiling the whole world with her fornications and her wickedness and her sorceries. We know that the Antichrist or the beast is going to one day have set up his own one world government and, and be at the, the head of that. And the way that, that he's going to come into power is that the other kings of the earth are going to give the beast their power. That's ultimately what's going to happen. Prior to that, though, you have this whore that's been doing all this work in the background where ultimately all of the whore's lovers are going to turn on her and destroy her and want to have nothing to do with her.